Welcome. Welcome to Mena's Matinee. I'm delighted you've joined me and we are just stepping out of my green room in my sanctified imagination like the old black Baptist preachers do. You know, I'm stepping out of my green room and I'm stepping into my own one woman um, show. And <laughs> one, once I finish being, you know, serious with this diversity officer, VP, professor gig, because you can't really tell funny jokes and <laughs> is this inappropriate. So I'm going to have my own one woman show and I'm going to step out and say, hello, everybody. <laughs> and then I'll be laughing. And so then everybody will start laughing and be like, the lady hasn't even told a joke yet. But <laughs> I love to laugh. I mean, I've had a lot of sorrow in my life, but also I seek to find joy. So my other um, sanctified imagination, when I'm coming out of a green room, I'm going to be stepping into Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. We're going to be sitting on some nice estate of hers and some very comfortable chairs. And she's going to turn to me and she's going to say, Mena. And I'm going to say, yes. She's going to say, I'm delighted to host you on Super Soul Sunday to talk about your new book, From Black Girlhood to Black Womanhood, Finding the Divine Feminine. And I've just been so inspired. And I'm going to say thank you. I'm so excited to be here too. <laughs> you know, so you have to sort of speak things into existence that is going to be on her book club list. Of course, at the moment, 75 agents have been like, nah, we're not interested in that. But you know, got to keep pressing on. So I'm stepping down from my green room into my inspiration room. And my inspiration room is has two things. There are two things in my inspiration room that um, keep me inspired. And one is my piano, my beloved piano. I don't know if you can see it behind me. I'm not great with this technology thing, but that's the piano. And uh, 1920, probably built around 1925 or so, um, from the cable company in Chicago. My parents bought it for $100. My brother and I started playing on it in the 1970s. He became a famous, worldwide famous piano, p pianist, <laughs> musician, because <laughs> he plays piano, violin, and he conducts. Been to the White House two or three times, I think three times. Um, and I was in green rooms then. <laughs> I've been in green rooms with him, but I've never had my own green room. But I wrote about him on my blog post, my one and only brother, shout out to Alwa Dodgen. And so um, this piano has traveled from Illinois to Nashville, Tennessee, five different homes in Nashville when I was at Vanderbilt. And then I moved back to Illinois. So obviously she had to come with me back to Illinois and she did. And then I um, moved around in Illinois a little bit. And then I brought her to Blacksburg and she's moved around here. And now she's here in my home in Blacksburg. Just got her tuned the other day. It's amazing. Um, piano tuner came, tuned her right up and Got to see the inside of the piano. I got a post on that, um, a picture of that on Facebook. It just brings me such joy. So one thing the room has is this piano. The other thing it has is art. So you can see Emmanuel, my son, Emmanuel Pratt Clark is an artist. So in this room, I have art from him and it's all for sale because he can make me new stuff. <laughs> he can make me new stuff, but he got his degree at the University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign in painting. So that's his calling and he's following his calling and his path. It's another one of piece of art. I think he really likes this one. This one might not be for sale, but <laughs> and, and these. And so he, uh, Emmanuel, at Emmanuel, A-O-P-C, it's his Instagram page. Um, he has a website as well by the same initials, Emmanuel, A-O-P-C. Artist, lives in the Bahamas, inspired by the Bahamas. Following his call, told me long ago he wanted to paint murals around the world, and that's what he started doing. So support him um, if you're into art. So those two things inspire me. And, and then I have a plant right here by this window. This window really inspires me. And the plant in here, I don't know if you can see it well, is a peace lily. And every now and then what I love about peace lilies, and I got these when my different points in time when people pass, people send you plants. <laughs> and I like the peace lily because every now and then it, it'll it bloom and flower. And so I feel like it flowers at times that are important to me. And so yesterday was the anniversary of my father's death. 
he died on October 30th, um, a few days ago, actually, um, in 1996, he died October 30th, 1996. And I always say racism killed him. He was 60 years old. He had a PhD in nuclear physics and he never really got to fulfill his dream. So I just had to put that out there, but this is my room of inspiration. And so I just want to talk a little bit about, uh, Men is matinee. What, what's up with, with this? So I was thinking, you know, so much going on in the world. It's, it's um, Sunday. And what, was, what is Sunday? Sunday is a day of rest. And um, I mean, even the Lord. I mean, she rested on Sunday. She was like, I've done enough. Taking a break. So I think we all just need to be in, inspired by that. And I was thinking, what do we do when we take breaks? And it's, it's a moment to pause. And what do we put into our pauses and our, our moments? And can I, could, could I create something to put in that moment of pause just to share with the world? And so um, that's what men matinee is. It's just a moment of pause and something to share in the world. And each moment will have a theme, but there's an underlying theme. And the theme is bringing joy to the world. Okay, bringing joy to the world. And so wh why that? And I was inspired by um, Angelus Pulse, an amazing um, performance group um, co-founded by Paloma McGregor. And she had a healing hour for women of color in the academy um, a little bit ago, a few weeks ago. And it was very inspirational. We talked about joy and I just wanted to, we talked about residue, what's left behind after a performance. So it doesn't just disappear. It's like, that's not, not a one moment in time, it lingers. And so this, this issue of joy lingered for me. And so bringing joy to the world. So I, I wanted to think about what, where, what, what, have, what has brought me joy and, and laughter, you know, brings joy. And Paloma's group is actually about movement and body and how we embody certain emotions and feelings and we actually need to release them and express them more. And so a little bit ago, I was very sad. A few weeks ago, I was sad. I had this post called last night. I watched myself cry and I did cry. And I had a little, just started a little gently and then it became big boohoo. And, you know, Nikki says it's, it's okay to cry. Sometimes we have to have a good cry and we must properly cry. That's actually words in her poem. We must properly cry. And so I did. But you know, I'm a black woman in America, I can't just sit around crying, like get up and do things. So I had to get up and do things and to think about, okay, how can I contribute, you know, joy to the world? So two things that have brought me joy I wanted to share is really about laughter. So one is this little video, y'all have probably seen it because it's making its way around the internet. This little boy. I can't keep the little boy from talking so much. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to show it to you. It's not the best. I'm not the best at technology. So you just have to sort of bear with me. Okay. Let's see if I could just start it. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. And you can find it on the internet. You just look at Jaden's math problems. But here we go. Jaden has one dollar bill, one quarter, and two pennies. How, how much money? There's many things I love about it, but I feel it's like an example of brilliance. And that's why sort of work and scholars are so important, like Bettina Love. She's going to be our keynote for the Faculty Women of Color in the Academy Conference. But her work talks about the importance of teachers. So the boy didn't answer the question in the typical way. He didn't say $1.27. He's like Jaden broke. He, he skipped levels. He just skipped levels of analysis and understanding and got to the bottom line. The boy's broke, you know, and then he was so delighted in his insight, you know, <laughs> And then he just had that laugh where he realized that this $1.27 added up to being broke. And I just love that. And I, I just wonder how do we cultivate that enthusiasm, excitement. And by the way, I hate story problems and math problems. I hated that as a kid. So it's like, 
if the turtle is going at this pace and 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 the rabbit is going at this pace, who's gonna get there first? And how much more time is it? I was like, I don't matter. They're both gonna get to the end. I, I hated them, but you can just imagine. You know, it's quarantine. He's got this big old thick math book, and you know, with his mama probably, but it could have been his daddy or his grandma or auntie or somebody's like, you know, well, you better read those story problems out loud, and you know, let's get this work done. And so he's like, Jaden has one quarter. <laughs> So I just love that. And I love his laugh. And I love that insight and that curiosity. So that I laugh at that a lot. And, and, it, and it brings me joy. The other thing that uh, I was thinking about in terms of moments of joy came from uh, a, a, a program at the University of Illinois, Van Champaign. I was there for nine years. Um, both my children actually went there, got their degrees. My daughter got her degree in sports management. Um, and my son in painting. And actually my daughter did my flyer. So I just want to shout her out for Venice Matinee. She designed that for me. So thank you, Rebecca Pratt Clark. And um, University of Illinois Beta Champaign had a professional development program. And a good friend of mine, woman of color, said, Man, we should go to this. I, I had a girl, I don't have time for that. I've got work to do. She's like, we don't take care of ourselves. We only need to spend some time just in self-care. Self-care wasn't a word. She didn't say self-care, but it's, it's now a word. But it, it wasn't a word. It was like about 10, 15 years ago. So I said, fine. I said, we're going to go. We're going to sit in the back. I, I had not been socialized by Nikki Giovanni, who hates when black people sit in the back. She's like, people died and fought and, you know, marched for you to be able to sit in the front. So sit in the front. I had not been socialized like that. I like to sit in the back. I like to sneak out. I like to sneak out. So I told my friend, we're going to sit in the back. And she's a sit in the front woman. She likes to sit there and get every little piece of knowledge she can. But she appeased me and we sat in the back together. Okay, And we're at a predominantly white institution. It's called PWI. So there are a lot of white people in this room. It's a room in the ARC. The, those of you at Illinois know there's a big um, rec center. And the, they rented out a room for this program. So there are a lot of white people. I don't know if there were any other people called, maybe one or two. You know, we always kind of scan the room and see <laughs> how alone you are. So we were very alone, two little women of color sitting in the back. And they had an exercise. And so it started out, you know, we need to take care of ourselves and pay attention, think about our lives, whatnot. Okay. So one of the exercises had to do with a jar. You see this jar? I just found this, this jar. Um, it was a symbolic jar, but I found an actual jar. And they said, put put what's important in your life in the jar, metaphorically. You know, rocks. Put your rocks in the jar. What's important? I like to collect rocks, actually. Um, I collect rocks wherever I go, and I write where I got the rocks from. But this exercise is about rocks in your, you know, priorities. So I, I wrote down my priorities, my rocks. And then they said, put your pebbles, a little smaller things, and then some sand. But make sure you get the rocks in there first, because if you put the sand in there and the pebbles, then you can't get the rocks in. So start with your rocks. I was like, okay, cool. And then she said, you know, journal. So I had a little journal. I've written journals for 45 years. That frames my book. <laughs> my book is based on 45 years of journal of trying to find the divine feminine. So I was still looking for her back then. And so I wrote about what I put in my rocks. I said, top priority, pebbles, secondary, sand, the tasks, what you have to do. And then I wrote in here what my rocks were. I said, marriage, motherhood, mama, because my mama was still alive back then, and my career. My pebbles were my daily task to support my rocks. And sand was my work to-do list. That's what I wrote, work to-do list. And then I had a revelation. And it says, I'm not currently a rock in my life. <gasps> I'm not even in the jar. I'm not even in my own jar. I'm like, wow, I got to put myself in the jar. I got to put myself in the jar. And that's kind of what today is about. It's, it's about putting ourselves in the jar and making sure that we're a priority in our own lives. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, who else, who else will? So that was good. That was a good part of the exercise. Serious. You have some things in life are serious. You can't be silly all the time. So that was the serious part. Then there was this really funny, silly thing. So she said, stand up. I think y'all can see me. So I stood up and um, she says, there's not enough laughter in the world. People don't laugh enough. Like, in fact, in some cultures in China, she said, they have laughing clubs laughing yoga. And I recently went to just verify. I didn't want to talk inappropriately about, you know, another culture, but there, there are 
Chinese laughing clubs. And she said, you know, we have to laugh more. And I go back to think about Angela's pulse and what do we embody? What do we release? So she said, you know, this exercise is about practicing laughing. And I turned to my friend. I said, did she say practice and laughing? My friend's like, shh. You know, she was trying to hush me because she knew I was going about to lose it. She could tell. So I, I'm trying to get myself together. I'm trying not to start laughing before the exercise begins. I've tried to master this technique of biting down on my back teeth to just kind of hold myself together. It's like, oh, goodness, where is this thing going? So she said, we're going to start. You know, everybody rise. She does her hands like an orchestra conductor, you know, choir conductor. And she's like, we're going to start something. I'm going to demonstrate first, she says. So the first exercise is, <laughs> I laugh every time I think about it. She said, ha, 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 ha. Just say, ha, ha, ha. So I said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so everybody does, ha, ha, ha. And then she does like this, like, okay, that's enough of that. I mean, who stops laughing on command? But she hushes us. Okay, she said, good, good job, good job, good job. <laughs> and I'm, I'm starting to laugh. I just, I'm just starting to laugh a lot. She said, the next one is, he, 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 he. So she's like, you know, begin. It was, like, he, he, he. It was like, I'm looking like a bunch of white people. Because I told you earlier, that's all that was in the room. It's like a lot of white people. They're, they're, he, he, he. they're following her instructions to laugh. And then she stops them. <laughs> and I'm still, I'm just about to double over. It, then she says, now the last one is, <laughs> is ho, ho, ho. Like Santa, big belly laugh. So she demonstrates ho, ho, ho. And then she, you know, everybody start, ho, ho, stop. And then the last one was, she says, put it all together. Ha ha, he he ho ho. So <laughs> she starts everybody and everybody's like, ha ha, he he ho ho. And I'm just howling in the back. I'm laughing so hard. I'm doubled over. I'm crying. I'm about to pee on myself. I'm <laughs> I just can't forget that moment. And then the people who are next to me, they're starting not to follow the instructions because they're just looking at me and laughing. And it just brought me so, such joy, you know, and everybody was laughing. Nobody's laughing on command and instructions. But it, it was just a reminder that sometimes we have to be intentional about, you know, bringing joy to the world. So I want this, 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 this moment of joy, uh, this matinee time is about music in addition to my musings, because I think music does bring joy to the world. And I found a piece appropriately titled Joy to the World. Not that Christmas song, not that Christmas song, because Christmas is in December. That's how I was socialized. I didn't get a whole lot of presents or anything, but I socialized at Christmas in December. And I hate those Hallmark movies that do Christmas in July because it sort of messes with my mind. I don't want Christmas to be in December. Maybe back in the day, you know, way back in olden days because the calendars and stuff were different. Maybe it was in July, but it's, it's not now. And so that just confuses me. So this is not that Joy to the World Christmas song. It's another song, but it is called Joy to the World. And it's by a man named Hoyt Axton. And so I... Got the sheet music offline, pay for it. You got to support artists properly. You can't just be taking their stuff and not supporting artists. And I looked at the lyrics and I like the lyrics. So I want to share the lyrics with you before I, I play the song. And you, some of you probably know this. Um, and I, they might've changed the lyrics because I went online because it's very soulful. It's very soulful. And I didn't know if Hoyt was, and I knew a faculty member um, Hoyt King passed away at Tennessee State. He was a black man. So I didn't know if Hoyt was black or white. And it was very soulful. And I just need to see who Hoyt was. And Hoyt was a white man, white man. And the lyrics that he sang on the video I watched are a little bit different than this, but I, I like these. So I'm going to go, 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 go with these lyrics. Okay. So you probably heard them. The Jeremiah was a bulldog. Okay, Jeremiah was a bulldog. Jeremiah was a bulldog. I'm like, Jeremiah? What do I call this bulldog? bullfrog, Jeremiah. So that's the only time I've heard of Jeremiah is in the Bible. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11, a lot of folks talk about that scripture. You know, I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of peace to give you a future and a hope. And if you will seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. So it's very affirming you know, scripture. But this bullfrog was named Jeremiah. So I, I have my ears, <laughs> my little ear <laughs> making music. I really like that. So I was like, okay, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. And, and so then bullfrog and um, different spiritual traditions, um, am, animals are symbolic. So I went to look up and learn about bullfrogs. And this is what I found. I want to share it with you. 
It said the bullfrog is a sign and a message that you and your family will be safe and free or freed from illness and disaster. I mean, how appropriate in today's world. That doesn't mean you don't take precautionary measures. That's exactly what it says. It doesn't mean you don't take precautionary. And we know all the precautionary measures everybody's talking about. Everybody knows what those are. It means that there is protection upon you and your household. Bullfrog's message is to stay calm no matter what is going on. You have to keep moving forward. The race of life is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to those who keep moving right along. You cannot grow weary at this point. Your prayers for the world are heard and you are not alone. Be prepared for miraculous solutions. That's, that's what it says. Be prepared for miraculous solutions. So, I'm, great, right? Joy to the world. So the lyrics. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. Never understood a single word he said. Never understood a single word he said. My little pages are out of order here. But he always had a mighty fine time. Yes, he always had a mighty fine time. Singing joy to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Then there's another stanza. It says, if I was the king of the world. I have to say, if I was the queen. If I was the queen of the world. Tell you what I'd do. Throw away the cars and the bars and the wars and spend more time with you. Yes, I'd spend more time with you. So I, I, I love, I love those lyrics. Okay, joy to the world. Now, before I officially play it, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit, of, just briefly about some music theory. Okay, some music theory. And I hated music theory. I'm just going to acknowledge that. I hated music theory. Um, just like checking my pearls for the moment. Like a little bit off, but not. I hated music theory, but I know it's really important. And at the last Pratt Music Foundation board meeting, it's a foundation founded after my father died, as I shared earlier, racism killed him, um, Theodore Pratt. But he is, I am who I am because of him and my mother, Mildred, who, um, whose birthday was also a few weeks ago in October. The Fa Pratt Music Foundation provides free music lessons to children who are talented, who cannot afford the privilege as my brother and I had of private music lessons. And so we talked about the importance of music theory. I'll try not to show my dislike for it. But this piece, one of the things I love about music are the chord progressions. And I talked a little bit about that, why I like black um, gospel music, black hymnals, spirituals, are these different chord progressions. And so I'm, I wanna talk a little bit about this. And it, it reminds me of um, a teacher that I had at the University of Iowa, where I went undergrad, and the, the class was the history of black music, and he was a little wiry, old, short, white man, small boned, and he spent the first day of class profusely apologizing for being white and teaching the history of black music, and the class was mostly black people, and he said, but I love black music. And I want you to love it too. In order to love it, you have to learn how to listen to it. So he taught us how to listen to jazz. He'd be like, hear that? That's the trumpet. Hear that? That's the trombone. Listen to the drums here. You know, listen, this is the sax. Do you see how she sings? You know, and he was so passionate. So I learned to listen to music, jazz, gospel, blues, reggae, all of that. So he taught me how to listen. So I just want to share a little bit about how to listen to this piece and the chord progressions. Okay, so this piece starts out in E flat. So it's in this E flat key, okay? So we hang out in E flat for a little while. We sort of bounce along in E flat and it has this wonderful, like I really like that. <laughs> so you'll hear that a couple of times. So it's just bouncing along in E flat and then we have this um, transition. Go up a half step. This is C sharp. We still have that. <laughs> so we hang out in C sharp for a little while. We're just bouncing along in C sharp. And then there's another transition and we go to F. Is it, we hang out in F a very short time. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls. And we hang out in F 
for a very short time. And we have this transition from F to G, to the key of G. Okay? And we hang out in G for a little bit. I love that. Okay. So this piece goes from E flat to E to F to G. of hope that's what I wanted to share <laughs> you know sometimes when we think of flat keys they're a little bit more mellow maybe sharp you know sort of have a little bit of hope flat so I, I share that as, as this progression of hope. if I'm gonna play I'm gonna play now joy to the world joy to the world you have to just forgive me because these little sheet music's a little fragile but I'm gonna try to get through it Thank you for joining me for Men's Matinee, and the universe willing, we'll 
come together on the first and third Sundays for just a moment of reflection. And in the interlude, I might post some songs or some other pieces of inspiration. I post a daily little inspirational message on Twitter. So you can follow me on Twitter at Meta PC, trying to post nice pictures of things on Instagram. I sort of learned the difference between the social media things, but Facebook is my go-to. So thank you for joining me and, and be blessed.